Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. This is Africa, and here is Benin. Now, let's get the lowdown, shall we? The early history of Benin isn't known, as there wasn't writing. But the people were there, various tribes of them, hunting and farming yams, from the Niger River to the humid, tangled rainforests, to the baobab and scrub-studded savanna. Most prominent among the early political powers was the Oyo Empire of the Yoruba people. The Oyo were rather militant and tended to fight with everything they had, as unsuccessful generals were expected to commit suicide. Something of a rival to the Oyo were the Fon people who had migrated into Benin and set up the Daome Empire with its capital at Abome. The Daome kings raked in a lot of wealth by trade with European colonial powers. What did they trade? People. They raided various locales and rounded up the captives for sale. This included practitioners of the Beninese Vodun religion, which was taken over to Haiti, where it became known as Voodoo. In 1823, Daome under King Gizo had become powerful enough to take on the Oyo Empire, beating them in battle and thus extending their reach into acquiring more slaves. Though it suffered defeats, the Daome Empire was particularly pugnacious, even having a regiment of women warriors called Amazons by the Europeans. King Gizo was eventually forced by Britain to stop trading slaves in 1852, so he used slaves to produce palm oil for export instead. The French were worried Britain had colonial interests in the region, and after the Second franco daomean War, conquered Bernard in 1892, and it became part of French West Africa. Christianity and Western ways spread in the South, but the North was Muslim. Benin gained its independence in 1960, and over a decade of conflict, coups, and economic commotion followed. Then, in 1972, Mathieu Carécou carried out another coup, assuring the people he wouldn't be forcing foreign ideas like communism on them. Then, he forced communism on them. Jittery foreign investors fled, the economy suffered, and communism was abandoned by 1990. This guy did his best to fix things, but progress was slow, and Carécou returned to rule till 2006. This gentleman followed him, who was succeeded by a man who, allegedly, once tried to poison him. While Benin's economy, much of which is based on cotton, has been growing, so has the number of people in poverty, and less than half the population can read and write. The government is busy trying to remedy the obstacles to Beninese prosperity, and is focusing on more investment in the tourism sector. So good luck to you, Benin. We wish you well. But as for me, it's bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>